Yo, brothers, hey, guns, Stephen here, Command Center Wargaming. Welcome back. So we're doing another video here today because it's some pretty big news. Once again, it looks like Games Workshop are going into that, uh, you know, YouTubers never get a break territory, uh, which is absolutely fine because it's been a little bit quiet these days on the release front. From Well, not really. It hasn't been totally quiet. But as for major releases, you know, they've been gearing up to something. So that's okay. So it looks like pre-orders have already gone up for the uh, Space Marine Codex uh, data cards. And we can see, see here some of the codexes as well. Some dice. We've got some of the uh, commanders here. Also looks like a new Primaris Lieutenant. Or it might actually be a captain. We'll have a look in a second. Um, and then we've got a sneak peek into the uh, upgrade sprues for the Primaris Marines, which is cool, uh, which look really nice. And there's a uh, reflections on the Space Marine design uh, video, which I haven't actually watched yet. So we might watch that together at the very end, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, quickly, just before we get started, I was um, I was also having a read up around on uh, on Facebook as well. And uh, there were, there's some speculation going on that the Rhino actually might be open topped. Because, you know, it's got that little part at the back there, um, you know, which is open. So people are wondering, you know, can, will Marines be able to fire out of the, the side of it or out of the top of it or whatever, you know, which is a, which is a pretty, which is a pretty huge thing, um, you know, and personally, like there's been some more debate as well talking about, um, you know, how many Marines they think it would fit. I personally think it's going to fit five. I don't think they're going to allow you to fit 10 in there. And the reason is, is because they still need to make the rhinos viable, right? Because obviously they've got the sprue for those. They're not going to want to like stop selling rhinos. Um, so I, I know rhinos can't, you know, stop, you know, can't carry Primaris, but still, it's still a way of getting 10 troops up the front as opposed to five. So I reckon five or six um, those transports, Primaris transports will cover because that makes sense too because each Primaris Marine is two wounds. So yeah, so I reckon that would be a good, a, a good balance. But one of the things that I've been seeing and I think it's a pretty crazy concept, like can you imagine even with five of them, five Hellblasters basically whizzing around the board all right, in these transports, open topped, doing like loop de loop flybys. So, can you imagine that? Like, basically, how crazy epic that would be if these things are open topped. I'm telling you now, like, that's the first thing that that I'm going to do is literally get five hell blasters and just literally chuck them in there and and just have them flying around and then having them shoot out their their plasma. It's like a a dais of plasma destruction. Um, I think it's very crazy. Um, as much as I'd love to do that, I kind of hope Games Workshop has spotted that one. And I kind of hope that uh, that it isn't a thing. I'm pretty sure it won't be open top though. Um, you know, but if it is, uh, like that's just going to completely break the game in my opinion. Because um, I could just see where you were literally going to get you know, lists of, of speeder, uh, fly, 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 no, that's what people are calling them, not rhinos, fly nos. We have fly nos flying around, um, stacked full of hell blasters. That's literally all you'll get because remember, um, if the, if the rhino is the fly no, the, the marine hover transport, if it is a, uh, a, a transport, then on the force organization chart, you won't have a limit for it. So unless they've put it in as an elite choice or something like that, which may also be the case, um, that way, again, because I can see them wanting to, you know, they don't want to cut out the Rhino completely. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, like it does make sense that they're a transport as well and they may honestly be an unlimited thing. But the thing is with the Rhino is that it's got like heaps of weaponry on it as well. So, number one, I can't imagine these flynos being very cheap in terms of, well, cost. That's this Games Workshop's thing. But also, points cost. Um, there are a lot of weapons on those things. So, you know, you've got like three auto cannons. 
uh, from what I've seen. And I think there was a rocket launcher. And also, uh, you've got those two storm bolters on the side. And that's that's just what I've seen so far. So, um, you know, so it's kind of just like, you know, I think that if people are thinking that this is going to be, you know, yes, it's a way to transport your Promaris Marines, uh, 100%. But if people are thinking this is going to be like a, you know, a 70 point troop transport for Primaris, I don't think it's going to quite be like that because the weapons are throwing it up. I think that this thing will be coming more in about maybe 130 points, um, to be honest. And, you know, which keeps the Rhino in there and makes the Flyno viable as well. So it's basically, you know, so yeah, I don't think, you know, I I could see you're going to, take three of these flynos and then you know like you're going to start to see your points stack up really fast but either way it's so awesome because you're going to get you know if this is a case where the flyno is open topped then you're going to get not only going to get a um you know like like a mobile plasma dais of destruction but you're also but you're also just going to get like protection for your hell blasters which is pretty epic so um you know, yeah, that that's that's some pretty epic work. So yeah, um, and just to touch on something, so only Adonis, I uh, I said to him because he he wants to go back to Space Marines because he went back to Imperial Guard, and um and I told him that uh, that he's gonna fall into the Games Workshop flavor of the month trap, uh, which is basically you know making Space Marines good for a month and then making them crap when they want to re-release Dark Elder or Elder. And uh, he said to me that, because I'm talking about buying this stuff now, that now I am falling into the Games Workshop trap. Thing is, no, 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 that doesn't wash because I'm not falling into trap because I have to buy the stuff to review it on here, right? So I have to buy it anyway. So I'm not falling into any trap because I'm buying it for the channel, right? So anyway, anyway, all good. Just mucking around. So let's have a look. Let's have a look here at, at this Indominus edition. So I think it's really cool how they've baked. This is a special edition version of it, by the way. So pre-order for the uh, for the codex, and you get these counters with it, and uh, it looks like a map of of Terra. Uh, sorry, a map of the of, of the galaxy, a Segmentum Solar. Um, you've also got some claying cards there as well, data cards, and a signed copy of from Robert Gilliman, with his Primark handwriting there, which looks pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, so this is looking cool. I have to see the price point in this. I'm not hundred percent sure if I could justify getting this collector's copy. If it's any more than say $200, um, even at $200, it's very steep for some plastic counters or lead counters and a map, you know, and some fancy boxing. But look, I dare say, I dare say if you do want this special edition, if you are an epic collector, um, then I, I would highly recommend pre-ordering it ASAP because I remember when I got the Custodes one from the, the, the collector's edition from the Custodes, it went like that. Like literally it was out the door so fast. So, uh, you know, Space Marines, the Custodes are popular. Custodes are mad popular. But, um, you know, Space Marines are infinitely more popular than Custodes. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's sold out already, to be honest. So, but anyway, whatever. So the Indominus Edition comes presented in a specially designed box that's covered in an embossed detail, detailing along with loads of awesome exclu- exclusive content, such as a numbered certificate handwritten by Robert Gilliman himself. I love it how you've got the exclamation mark after that Games Workshop. To, uh, to imply that conditions apply because I was about to say, be, be careful with that one. <laughs> anyway, inviting you to join his Indominus Crusade. Um, yeah, so a double-sided, it reminds me of that. I don't know, like if anyone remembers like back in the 80s, like I was very young, but um, Pepsi were doing this promotion that like if you, if you went and bought if you handed in something like, I think it was something like a million or 20 million cans of Pepsi, they did an ad where um, you could basically trade 20 million cans of Pepsi for like a Harrier. And um, it was on a TV commercial. And basically what happened was, is that 
some like multi gazillionaire being a smart ass basically decided like he actually went out and um, bought you know 20 gazillion million cans of Pepsi and handed it to Pepsi and literally said where's my Harrier and Pepsi were just like what um, and you know obviously because they can't put a Harrier up for sale because it's a or give away because it's a military item even without the money um, you know it's basically a uh, uh, you know it's, it's a military asset you know a civilian cannot have a Harrier all right <laughs> N- neither can a civilian company like you know and um, and and so basically what happened was is that this guy then pursued it to sue Pepsi um, because they advertised on TV that like if they sent you know 20 million cans of Pepsi to this guy that you know that there would be a that he could get a Harrier they couldn't provide him with one so he sued and from memory he actually won he was on a TV commercial in the 80s so anyway I'd be like how do I know Robert Gilliman actually signed that but they've put the exclamation mark there so you know yeah it's subjective so good work games workshop uh, <laughs> so I want minis I want free minis for the rest of my life anyway So, stuff the Harrier. So, yeah. A double-sided poster featuring a galaxy map that shows the Space Marine homeworlds and Crusade fleets on one side and 130 examples of Space Marine chapters with their color schemes and chapter icons on the other. 10 metal Space Marine company coins. Meh. It's like objective markers. I, I don't know. Like, as I said, it depends. For me, it just depends how much the price tag is. 195, 200 Australian, which would be about 150-ish for American. Um, I, I could probably, yeah, you know, I'd probably do it, maybe, maybe. But like, I mean, I, I could buy more minis for that. So you know, 124 cards for easy reference during a game divided into three sets. Um, so I won't, yeah, so one's 36 tactical objectives, 13 psychic powers. The other set is 48 cards, 38 stratagems, 3 combat doctrines, 7 litanies of battle. And the third set is 27 chapter tactics, 8 chapter tactics, and 19 successor tactics. So, I mean, I I can see, like, for someone like myself who has quite a few armies, that getting that, this special edition would actually be quite beneficial. Because you're probably going to save money by the time that you go... And buy everybody's bloody data cards and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll see what happens when it comes around. I'll see. I'll see how my Forge World ordering's looking. Um, the Indominus edition is strictly limited to 800 copies, so don't miss out. Seriously, uh, 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 celebrate your chronometer. Get your parents or partner to kick you out of bed. Do whatever you need to do to make sure you're online and ready to pre-order this incredible set. Oh, I don't know. That's a little bit of like questionable sales pushing games workshop isn't it promoting kids to nag their parents to buy the stuff i don't know anyway whatever i'm not buying from your stores anyway anymore so that doesn't matter um anybody who wants to know the reason why check back a few videos of one of my experiences as i had uh, as a customer from a games workshop store but anyway uh so codex space marines the new codex features the more exhaustive background and be- beastry for the space rings that we've ever compiled is a single book. So it's origins, purpose, all that kind of stuff. A little bit of creation mythology. Um, you know, with, with Mr. Crawl himself. There's a cover of the book. We looked at that in the last video. Um, also customizable successor chapter tactics as well. And it'll also be available in a digital format. So we might be able to see like a better example of... Um, of what's going on here in this photo. So, okay, so just quickly, so two comments from the from the YouTube. Number one, um, it was I think it was RD said that that this that this uh, guy here has a lot of like antenna on him, and maybe he's like a spotting unit for like artillery and stuff like that, or maybe even like other guns and stuff. Um, it's funny, and I, and I do agree that could be a thing because. If you remember, back in one of my other videos, I actually said that the antenna on that Dreadnought, back there I was calling it a Lego Dreadnought, that the antenna on that Dreadnought may actually be a spotting thing. So it's, this is actually this is actually a theory I've been actually going with for quite some time. And, um, and yeah, so 
it's um it's it's pretty pretty awesome so let's just see what happens there with that one um but yeah so let's let's keep going there so data cards space marines right so here we go this is data cards and we've got the white scars supplement as well so here we go here are the supplements i might just what i might do is there they're the cards there i'll click on that so which is really cool and then we'll just have a look or we'll have a read quickly through this because this looks important so the codex supplements so here we go white scars and um and this and, and the ultramarines codex supplement so it's pretty cool it's nice that they sort of get their own little artworks and stuff like that you know hopefully we do see that we do see like a lot more artwork and everything going on um per chapter you know like unique to their chapter anyway so codex space reason enables you to field armies belonging to any chapter um, yep, so basically if you go through, you can also then expand on that to take a dedicated chapter with the expansions. Um, this enormous background sections of each supplement will bring a new level of depth with detailed breakdowns of chapter organization and iconography, as well as their full history and, and uh, bestiary for the unique characters and units. The Codex supplements will also include all of their associated chapter name characters and other units, such as Chief Liberian Tigerius, Khorasan Khan, Bike, etc., along with bespoke relics, psychic powers, wall of traits, la 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 la. Okay, so essentially what they're doing is um, it's actually a little bit cheeky. Um, because it looks like what they're doing is it's like instead of just buying one codex now, you're gonna have to buy ten. Pretty much. Whereas like before, if you went and you you know, you sort of had like an ultramarine army and you decided you wanted to play Imperial Fists. You sort of could have done that or white scars because they're all kind of like rolled into one. Um, but here, like, it looks like they're going to be milking us for more money, but that's okay. Um, I'm glad they're giving us this option. I just hope that the rules are significant. You know, like, it's just some bull crap, you know, blood angels. You know, here, you buy this book, it's full of fluff and pick that no one cares about. Or not even that no one cares about, but just that like, here's this fluff that goes nowhere and doesn't answer the actual real question, which is where the blood angels come from, uh, blood ravens come from, um, you know, and then, you know, you pay like $60, $70 for this, you know, one data sheet of a character. Um, as long as the rules are substantial, I'm down with it. So the first two supplements will be White Scars and Ultramarines, and there'll be more to come. Um, and yep, so objective markers, we've got dice as well. I'm not sure about those ultramarine dice. I already got the last ultramarine dice and they rolled like ass. So I've never used them in a game. Um, but they certainly look cool. I think this is fantastic if you're a white scars player. Um, you know, sort of like for the, uh, you know, for, for the aesthetic and the cosmetic and support your side. Although... Geez, my my ultramarine dice they they sure rolled a lot of ones, you know. There's a it's a funny it's a funny thing because I was reading something where people were saying that like these are only good dice as long as you flip it so that the skull became the six, and then the ultramarine symbol became the one. And if you flip that around, you'd be rolling sixes all day and every day with those dice. I believe they were they were more they were better balanced in later versions. So I've got I got the Space Wolf pack as well. They weren't quite as bad, um, but the Custodes one and then these Ultramarines ones. Oh my goodness, they were bad. Anyway, um, yeah. So new miniatures we know about them already. Uh, but that's not all. Remember this guy from the Wake the Dead box set. Well, as of next week, you'll be able to order this awesome Promars Lieutenant. <laughs> With power swords separately. Ah, so I got this guy with Wake the Dead, did I? Yeah, I believe I did too. I actually wasn't sure because there's been so many Primaris lieutenants now. I've actually lost track. Um, well, I've already got him. But, you know, I think he's a really cool lieutenant. Uh, to be honest, he looks pretty boss. He'd look good on top of a tank, you know, or one of those um, rhinos, like holding his, holding his hand up, which is pretty cool, so... Yeah, I kind of like this, this little... Yeah, it's good. 
on the Aquila. So here we go. Uh, on the topic of new miniatures, you'll soon be able to upgrade the Mark X Tacticus of the Gravis, power armor of your White Scars Primaris models, and kit them out with chapter-specific transfers with the ability named White Scars Primaris Upgrades and Transfer Sets. Right, so here we go, and I imagine there's going to be a lot more of these. I'm actually hoping for Black Templars as well. Um, I really like the Black Templars. They've kind of been left out of things um, for a while, um, or since like 3rd edition. But anyway, um, it'd be great to see some, you know, Black Templars stuff. Uh, with excitement of Palpatal, we managed to crowd together some of the most uh, fanatical Space Marine fans, some of who were writers and miniature designers, responsible for developing the new Space Marines book and miniatures to speak with them about why they love the Emperor's Finest so much. Okay, so it's a bit of a video. Let's watch that together, okay? My first experience of Space Marines was uh, buying the RTB01 box set. Uh, me and my brother both went into the shop together and we both got a box set and on the same day. The very first time I saw a Space Marine was at my uh, cousin's house. The first time I ever saw a Space Marine would have been the intro game set up in Games Workshop Bristol in about 1990. In a small town in England called Ashby de la Zouche where I went into a little model shop and they had um, some Games Workshop pamphlets which were the old how to play Warhammer 40,000 second edition and Space Marines were on the cover of that. Some Blood Angels fighting against That'll be a video a actually, I'd like to Space Marine, my story. Uh, beak, uh, and he had a shuriken catapult, that's how old I've been was. Main I went the... into school and I saw my best bud, he had like a, a plastic case of 15 Space Marines which uh, were all jumbled in there in, in, in one box and uh, I just, it floored me. I had been irrevocably changed for the better, that was it. I, I knew what Space Marines were now and I needed to know more about them. So I remember buying some yeah. Deathwing Terminators, that was the very first Space Marine I ever painted. The first Space Marines I painted were Blood Angels and I was old enough to have painted them orange because that was expected. I got into them when you're expected to paint them orange. I prefer them now as just red. Yeah, I just uh, we just had loads of fun. I just painted them all different colours. I remember using really shiny enamel paint at the time, which didn't go very well. I assumed, of course, that having a fine detail brush was the best thing. So I got my undercoat them white with a fine detail brush. So they're horribly lumpy. Every birthday, I used to take my birthday money into the Games Workshop store and buy them. Yeah, we were all there. Got one with a Laos cannon, and then I got a Terminator with the assault cannon because it looked cool. Um, then I got a Captain. It's amazing. Best birthday ever. Space Marines are kind of synonymous with Games Workshop. They're kind of the the iconic figure, the the thing that kind of drew me in and went, this is Games Workshop, these are Games Workshop games, uh, they've got Space Marines in them. The first thing that I think of every time I think of Warhammer 40,000, so they've got a silhouette that's immediately recognisable. Um, the, the style of the helmets, the shoulder plates, the nice crisp lines of the edges, you've got the heraldry. The the shape of the legs, the, the huge greaves. The coolest hero you could think of. Completely loyal, completely fearless. Mankind's ultimate warrior, striding through the steam and smoke of battle. Uh, he's like genetically enhanced, psycho indoctrinated, clad in power armour, you know, great big bolt guns, chain swords. What's not to love? There's just there's just nothing that isn't cool about Space Marine. You can't have 40k without Space Marines, uh, and they embody all the best qualities of awesome. Warhammer 40,000. They have the sensibilities of a medieval knight, but twins with high tech, That's a sweet cool armor there. and weaponry. They are the epitome of both of those aspects, which is just the strangest but most awesome disparity. You know, it's these two completely different ideas. They are secular war monks. They're humanity's greatest soldiers, but they're not really human. They've essentially had to sacrifice being part of humanity in order to defend it. It's grim, it's dark, it is 40K. So I actually worked out how many models I'd painted once by making a list and then numbering all my different armies. And I've painted around 2,000, and of that, about 10th of those are Space Marines. I think it's probably around about 200. Probably a couple of hundred at least. It's probably about 1,000, give or take. I've probably painted in the region of about 1,000 Space Marines. So over the years, I've painted a lot of Space Marines, um, starting from that initial army that I did. Um, then I started painting some Ultramarines, and then when I was working for Games Workshop, in the retail chain, we had to paint a lot of Space Marines for our intro tables and our cabinets. I imagine you would have. I started working in the studio where I had to paint even more Space Marines. So I, I must have painted thousands. Yeah. It's a lot. It's an awful lot. So I, I reckon, I don't know exactly how many, but I reckon everybody's games are hobby, well, which is why so many people collect them. But yeah, Probably not, obviously not as much as him, but a like. Kid. 
painted space rooms, collected space rooms, and, and it always will be. You can't have Warhammer 40,000 or Warhammer. the Imperium without them. Uh, the Imperium wasn't founded on pure human pluck and the, the triumph of the little guy over the... If not a thousand, a couple of space that's for sure. I suppose when I think about it, encountering that little leaflet in that model shop um, is a bit of a life-changing experience for me. I mean, I got so excited seeing that. And then having a look at this leaflet and looking at the back and seeing all different colour schemes. I carried this thing around with me all week until my dad took me to Games Workshop Darby to go and get some. So awesome. I think, weirdly, just that, that one day out and encountering Space Marines in that way, I think is, well... So given my life the quite strange direction that it's taken over the last few years. <laughs> yeah, which is interesting because I actually was going to make a video before I even saw this, uh, just talking about like how I uh, got into Space Marines and the sort of where it all started for me and stuff. Okay, I'll listen to this guy. The thing about painting Space Marines, of course, is to paint the power armor smoothly with a nice finish to it by applying... In the paints, two, two thin coats. coats. Ah, there he is, two thin <laughs> coats. He's all right, he's all right. Not the best painter in the world, but he's all right. So anyway, um, basically, yeah, so I um, I was going to share a video and uh, on my experiences with Space Marines and stuff like that. Um, I think that'll be coming up pretty soon, and I'd love to hear your experiences um about you know how you sort of when you first sort of saw space marines or what you got you into warhammer but uh we'll do a whole new video on that and um look this is me steve here from command center wargaming if you've liked the video consider subscribing to the channel give us a like share comment all that and uh, our catches in the next one everybody keep rolling